Welcome to our educational video. This video has been developed by MedNav. MedNav is an organization that helps to promote women's and children's health worldwide through education and innovation. If you'd like to know more about our work or indeed support us, please visit this website link. Repair of third and fourth degree tears should be carried out in theatre with good analgesia, an operating light, an assistant and aseptic conditions. The internal anal sphincter is identified as a glistening white fibrous structure between the rectal mucosa and the external anal sphincter. The ends of the sphincter may retract and so the placement of Alice forceps may help facilitate the repair. Take a full thickness bite of the internal anal sphincter from one side and carry on to take a full thickness bite of the other side. Now reverse your needle, taking a full thickness bite from the same side and through to the side you started from. Tie off this stitch. This end-to-end -end mattress suture technique is used along the length of the internal anal sphincter. The external anal sphincter can be identified as a thick, fleshy, red structure. Once identified, place Alice forceps to either edge. The end-to-end -end technique involves the same technique as with the internal anal sphincter and should be used for all partial thickness tears, that is those classified as 3A and some 3B tears. The overlapping technique may require dissection of the external anal sphincter to the pararectal fat, which is seen as a yellow adipose tissue. This allows for adequate mobilization of the sphincter. Repair the sphincter in a double-breasted fashion. When you've placed your stitches, secure the stitches with a small clip. When you've placed both stitches, tie these stitches. Similar outcomes have been seen for the repair of the external anal sphincter with both end-to-end -end stitch or the overlap double-breasted stitch technique. Bury the surgical knots beneath the superficial muscles in order to prevent knot migration and pain. At the end of all perineal trauma repairs, a PR and PV must be performed to check for hemostasis and adequacy of the repair. For third and fourth degree tears, you will need to give a course of prophylactic antibiotics to reduce the risk of infection. She will need stool softeners for a week to reduce the risk of wound dehiscence. Women should be given advice on pelvic floor exercises and they should be followed up if available.